On today's video, we have a viewer's request. They would like to see some etching of different types of welds with different techniques. So I got a couple of different pieces set up here that we're gonna weld on. And then I'm gonna take you through the etching process. We're gonna be making two different types of welds today, one being a T-joint weld on some stainless steel, the other being some carbon steel pipe. What we're trying to find is the difference in a lay wire technique and the dabbing technique. When we do our dabbing technique on the fillet weld, I'm gonna do a continuous motion with the dabbing, and also we wanna see a pause and go motion with the dabbing, and then we're gonna lay wire with the walking the cup as well. We'll do that on the stainless, as well as the carbon pipe here to see if there's a difference on the penetration between the dabbing technique and the lay wire technique. We're gonna utilize the Everlast Storm 215C, and I'm gonna set it up to do TIG welding. This will be the fourth process actually that we found this machine can do. We're gonna go ahead and reverse the polarity, get it set up for TIGging, and then on our torch, we got our boot, pull the boot up, put the stinger on there. Now we're set up to TIG weld, so let's get at it. I'm utilizing the Bowler ER308L, the AWS spec of A5.9. We got the piece tacked up, the machine's on. I got it set at 136 amps. I got my tungsten sharpened using the E3 332 tungsten. Got the number eight gas lens on a 17 torch here. I'm gonna utilize the continuous dab motion technique. So this hand's gonna pull at a consistent speed and then I'm gonna dab it. I'm gonna go ahead and make a second pass on this dabbing one that we did here. I turned it up to 144 amps here. We're gonna do this straight on top of the other one and then we'll offset a couple. Now I'm gonna do two more passes. One's gonna lay in the bottom of the weld here and then I'm gonna stack one on top of it. So we're gonna do two stringers. All right, we got the first weld made with the continuous motion dabbing it. Now I'm gonna put in the first pass on the backside here. We're gonna weave it, lay wire, walk in the cup. Heat's the same, 134 amps on the machine there, so go ahead and get this, this other weld laid. Got the first lay wire pass made. Now I'm gonna go over it with some eighth inch. Same thing, walk in the cup, and then I'll go over with two stringers of 332 on top of that, offsetting those. All right, we got the second piece that we're gonna be welding on here. It's a piece of two inch carbon pipe, open butt. I'm gonna go ahead and use the Bowler ER70S2 the AWS spec of A5.18. Got the machine set at 92 amps, so I'm gonna do this one starting with the dab technique. We got the first roots laid with the dabbing technique. Did a couple of uh, the hot fill passes as well. Now I'm set up ready to walk the cup and do the lay wire technique. Got 93 amps set on the machine, so let's get at it. We got both welds made here. We got the open butt on the pipe. Then we got the T-joint on the stainless. We're gonna get these things cut, ground, and etched. So we're gonna take you through that process. Ooh. 
Now we're going to go ahead and grind and finish all these pieces to a polish. I'm going to go through 80 grit to a 120 grit and then a 200 grit. Then we're going to take some scotch bright wheels and polish them up with that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started, get these ground, and then we're going to bring Paul in to do the navel jelly swab. So let's get at it. We got the welds cut, ground, and polished now. I got Paul here, he's gonna be doing the etching. What this is gonna show us, how these welds penetrated using the different weld techniques with the lay wire technique, as well as the dabbing technique. It's gonna show me where I can make changes in making these welds and where we can improve in making a better weld with this, so. Paul? So we'll, we'll apply the, the ferric chloride to it, 10%. You just want to use a little bit, of course, latex gloves, glasses, just a little dab. You don't need a whole lot. Definitely want to be safe with this stuff. You don't want to spill it, get it on your hands and your face, on your eyes. If you do, you definitely want to run to the sink and wash it off immediately. <clears throat> Let that sit for a minute. That stainless yeah, it, it looks like know, it's going to take a little, take longer. A little longer. Yeah. So we got them etched and we're going to talk about it. Me and Jeff can go through it about how the penetration is of the well deposit, how it looks. And um, we'll talk about the stainless one first. So you can see where we had a little, little lack of fusion where we couldn't buff it out. But um, we, get, you know, you, you can you can definitely tell the weld deposit it got good fusion except for the spot right there. That that would be you in know. the lay wire technique right. as well. If right. I were doing a fillet weld of this application, I would definitely dab that first root first in pass. there. Yeah, yep. first pass to, over it. to. Um, you know, avoid that that mistake there, right. and then I'll walk over it. Right. I always prefer the walking method because it's a more consistent. It is. Uh, it, you can pace yourself while while walking it rather right. than dabbing it. Plus, you pick up a rhythm. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, absolutely. So, so that's that's a good thing to know. I've never right. you know got, got the any chance. On this, yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. to see you know how my fillet welds actually penetrate and what techniques I'd like to use when doing different weld positions and. Uh, not just positions, just, but, but processes yeah. and just mm -hmm. different metals and, and uh, different, different scenarios, joints, yep. you know, different joints too, you know. Yeah. So that's... That was really cool. You can yeah, actually see the difference definitely. from the first pass to the second pass and you know, your base metal, uh, how much we actually penetrated, penetrated in there as well. So that's, that's a good thing to know. So what we got on this carbon? Over here on this side, this is going to be the lay wire technique. And then over here, I dabbed it. So... Got a little bit more penetration on the root, it looks like. Uh, right. You know, dabbing it, it's going to open up and have that right. keyhole effect to whereas you can see how see, nice, yeah. yeah, that root yeah. is and the cap and everything. It's just... Nice the, and consistent. The penetration as well, I just, right. I like how much more it soaks Wider. into the actual, yeah, base rather yeah. than concentrating that heat into the center when right. doing the just straight dab technique, so... Right. It's definitely cool, like I said, to get to see this part of the, uh, you know, behind the, behind scenes, the scenes of the of, of the weld. Right, yeah, right, absolutely. Yeah. So this is, this is what your NDE guys look at too, in the X rays and all that, you know. So this is what they see in the, the phase array and X ray part of everything. So <clears throat> right on. Pretty neat. Definitely like to you know do some more, whether it's non destructive or destructive or, testing, right. just to you know, so we have a wider range of knowing these welds and our techniques right. and the things we use on the day to day and what what really works and what really doesn't work. So uh, right. this is a really cool test here. I, I really enjoyed it, you know, always learning new things, not just about welding, but about myself and my welding techniques. So Correct. I appreciate the insight yeah, as well, anytime, Paul. Anytime. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching. You can head over to weld.com and get connected with us directly on the members section, as well as on the forum, you can ask questions to our advisors who will help you answer any of these questions. So head over there for any exclusive content and we'll see you next time.